In this video, we will discuss the problem rotate matrix by 90 degree in the anti-clockwise direction. The problem has been previously asked in companies like Microsoft. So let's see the problem statement here. Problem says that we'll be given a matrix here and we have to rotate this given matrix by 90 degree in the anti-clockwise direction here. So let's see what we have to do. If you will see, let's say we were given the matrix that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So when you'll rotate this matrix by 90 degree uh, anti-clockwise, so this particular top row that is there it will rotate by 90 degree and it will look like this so 3 to 1 will come here now after that like uh, you had 4 5 6 so it will come here and then 7 8 9 so it will come here so this is the expected output after rotating the matrix by 90 degree now how can we solve this particular question here so one thing that you can observe very carefully is that all the elements that were there in the 0th row okay all the elements that were there in the 0th row after rotation they are in which particular uh, place so they are in the first in the 0th column here all the elements that were in the 0th row they are now in the 0th column and all the elements which were in the first row now they are in which uh, column the those elements are in the index one column here so they are in the first column all the elements that were there in the second uh, column index two column uh, sorry all the elements that were there in the index two row they are in the index two column here so one thing that i'm very sure is that if an element was uh, at mat of ij let's say an element was present at i comma j index now in the updated matrix what will be the uh, what will be the column for that but like uh, what will be the column for that el element so if i was the row if if an element was at the zeroth row now it will be at the zeroth column here so if it was at the ith row it will be at ith column so in terms of column i can write i here now after this we have to identify that what else happens so if you see after this if an element was uh let's say in the like let's say if an element was in the uh, in this particular place let's say if 6 was there right now if 6 was there suppose the element 6 was there now it is occurring where it is occurring at this particular place here correct so how can i identify uh, in terms of row that what is the new row for the element so let's start from the very last element here if you will see let's say if we have got this element that is uh, let's say 9 here now what is the index like what is the uh, what is the uh, value of the column here the column here is basically equal to nothing but 2 here correct and uh, and remember one thing that the n value is 3 so the column basically here that is the j value is basically what the j value is equal to 2 here it is the second column right now this element goes where this element goes uh in uh this particular place okay so all the elements that are there in the second column understand one thing that in terms of column all the elements that were there in the second column all the elements that were in the second column now they are going to which place they're going to the zeroth column here okay so what can i say here i can say that the element uh at the jth column it will go to which place element at the jth column it will go to n minus 1 minus jth row okay now what do i mean by this if the j value was uh if the j value was 2 here if the j value was 2 here so what will be the new row that it will go to so the row that it will go to is basically n minus 1 minus uh 2 so 3 minus 1 minus 2 so this will give me what 0 so that is why i need to write what i need to write that this element will go to the new row and the new row will be n minus 1 minus j here so this is how you can identify this very easily that uh, the elements which were in the ith row now they will go to the ith column in terms of column the column will be i and in uh, in terms of uh, the new row the row will be equal to n minus 1 minus j here so this is the observation that you can have so what you can basically do is you can create a new matrix and uh, what you can do in that new matrix is let's say you create a resultant matrix or something and then you can say that at the index n minus 1 minus j i you can update the mat of ij element uh, like this you can update for all the values of i comma j index in the matrix here now if you will see what will happen is firstly we can uh, take the size of this square matrix then after that initially we update the resultant as zero then after that we iterate and add the n minus j minus 1th row and the ith column we update the mat of ij element after that we like uh, once we have stored this in the new uh in the new uh, uh list uh, in the new resultant matrix then after this we want to store this resultant matrix in the original matrix so we'll update this accordingly now what will be the time complexity for this code the time complexity for such a code will be basically order of n because we like order of n square because we are iterating throughout all the matrix elements and the space complexity will be order of n square as well because we are using extra space and we are declaring a resultant uh, resultant matrix which is which is going to store the anti-clockwise representation and then we copy the anti-clockwise representation store 
showed in the resultant to the original matrix because at the end of the day we will check the original matrix here okay now how can we do it more optimally so what we can do is we can try and observe one more thing here if you will see the better approach is that we can rotate the uh, rotate the given uh, matrix in form of cycles now what do i mean by this if you will see here uh, what we can understand is that there are two cycles that exist if the n value is 4 here so the grid is of 4 cross 4 size so you can see that the very first cycle will be the first row first row last row first column and second column this will come in the very first cycle and in the second cycle which elements will be there the second row second column se second row second last row and second column and second last column so basically the internal elements you can see that firstly the outer circle that is there those elements will be considered in the in the first cycle in the next cycle the inner circle elements will be considered that i have drawn with blue color now how does this help us so notice one thing that uh, what we can do here is uh, once you uh, once you have identified that you can basically switch the cycles once you have identified that you can swap in terms of cycles then it becomes very easy the reason being because if you will see initially we will be at the very first cycle okay now there are two cycles in this problem because n value is given as 4 so n by 2 is the number of cycles that you can have so you will have two cycles for this particular test case here now what will happen in this particular test case is if you see so so we will be uh, initially will be uh, swapping which 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 and which elements so initially you can see that uh, the corresponding elements that we need to take is 1 then we need to take 4 then we need to take 13 and then, then we need to take uh, 16 so initially my i j is 0 and correspondingly we are taking the elements at j comma n minus 1 minus i then we are taking the element at n minus 1 minus j comma i and then we are taking the elements at n minus 1 uh, minus j comma n minus 1 comma i so we are taking the elements at the four boundaries and we will basically swap them so what will happen is uh, after like uh, after swapping uh, like one will go down then after this what will happen four will come here then 16 will go up and then 13 will go on the right side so basically uh, the elements will get swapped by one uh, by one uh, place each so that is how what will happen is four will come here 16 will come here one will come here and 13 will come here once this happens then you will uh, do it for the next element so the next element that you will do it for is five corresponding to five you need 14 and then you need what you need 12 and then you need three here so again uh, swapping will be done so five will go down 14 will go towards the right side 12 will go up and th 3 will go towards the uh, downward left side so basically the swapping will be done and these elements will also get placed at their positions now after that the next element that you will be at is basically 9 now with respect to 9 whatever corresponding elements are there in the other uh, other rows and columns you will basically get them and you will uh, swap by one time okay now after this what happens your first circle is ready and you can notice that we did not go till the like we were iterating uh, we were iterating and we did not go till the last we only went till this particular point so you can understand one thing that how many cycles are we iterating for we are iterating from zero till less than n by 2 because total we have to iterate for n by 2 cycles that is why we are doing this now even uh, even in this case if you see uh, when we were iterating for the very first cycle we iterated till which particular index we iterated till the j index of 2 because we were uh, swapping till 2 and then after that when it comes to 1 again then uh, you will not swap again for the last uh, uh, for the last place here that is uh, this place okay so you can see that my j is starting from where my j will start from uh, 0 obviously but it will it will go till n minus 1 minus i here the reason being because if suppose that the n value is 4 here so 4 minus 1 minus 0 so in like j will be less than 3 here so less than 3 means j will go till 2 so initially it had to go till 2 so that is why uh, that is what we have done so j will be less than n minus 1 minus i for a particular for a particular value of i here now after this what will happen is in the next cycle the internal elements will get swapped accordingly and then the rotated matrix will be found now if you see so the complexity of this code is how much this is basically taking order of n square approach uh, because uh, like first loop is roughly iterating till uh, n by 2 times second is iterating uh, almost order of n times so this will this is order of n square uh, in the worst case now if you see what we can do is we can basically take the size of the matrix here then after this uh, we can basically say that we'll iterate for n by 2 cycles overall and then we can basically iterate for the first outer cycle then the next inner cycle then next inner cycle one by one and we will have uh, we'll have to swap four elements at a time by one one place each so like initially we'll store the element at ij 
then after that j comma n minus 1 comma i then after that uh, n minus 1 uh, minus i comma n minus 1 minus j and then after that n minus 1 minus j comma i so basically all these four elements that you need to take at one point of time like you can see that i've highlighted this in the first example which is i comma j which is uh, j comma n minus 1 comma i and like this i have updated all the uh, elements here now once this is done then your uh, rotated matrix would be found so what is the time complexity for this particular approach it is basically order of n square uh, if you see the space complexity uh, it is going to be order of one because i'm not taking any extra space so it is a little optimal uh, it is a little optimal in terms of space Space. but is this the best code that we can write no we can do it more uh, easily using the basic uh, approach of reversing every row and then transposing the matrix so what you can do is you can basically uh, do it in the same matrix but you can have some observations here now notice one thing that what i can do is if i reverse each row firstly i'll reverse every row what will happen in because of that so when i'll reverse every row then the matrix that i'll generate is uh, 3 2 1 Okay, then after that, we'll have 6, 5, and 4. Then we'll have what? We'll have 9, 8, and 7. So, firstly, what I've done is I have reversed each row. Okay, I have reversed each row. Now, there's one thing that is known as transpose. Now, in transpose, what happens? The like uh, the row, first row becomes the first column and uh, the second row becomes the second column uh, third row becomes the third column so what will happen when i'll do the transpose of this particular matrix that i've obtained so far so like uh, first row will become the first column so you will have three two one here then uh, second row will become the second column so you'll have six five four here okay and then third row will become the third column so you will have nine and then eight and then seven here so this is what you're going to have so when you will do what when you will uh when you will basically uh transpose this matrix then you will get the final result that was expected so the basic approach uh, like the very basic fundamental observation is that you can uh, first of all reverse every row and then transpose uh, reverse each row and then transpose the given uh, transpose the updated matrix here so how can we do this if you will see the code so what we need to do is we need to basically first of all take the length of the matrix then after that we need to reverse every row once you have reversed then we will do the transpose in transpose what happens is the ith element becomes the like i comma jth element becomes the j comma i element so that is why we are swapping like this now what is the time complexity for such a code the time complexity taken will be uh, order of n square because we'll be iterating throughout the uh, matrix elements here uh, for reversing and then we will be iterating for transposing as well and the space complexity will be how much it will be order of one because i'm not taking any extra space here i'm just doing the uh, rotation in the same matrix here i hope you have understood this so far let's try and submit this code as well so let us try and submit this code hopefully it should get accepted here so you can clearly see that my code was able to pass all the test cases thank you for watching this video and keep coding guys